Hello, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be looking at 17F limits and continuity. So start off with limits. Um, it's important to understand the notation. We say that um, as x approaches a, f of x approaches p. So that's what this notation means. If we have on the limit of f of x, as x approaches a, um, then the value of the function approaches p. Let's take this as an example. Let's say we have a hyperbola with function um, 1 over x plus 4. You can also see the graph on the left. Um, it, clearly, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4, uh, which is here. So I can roughly draw the line there. So that's y equals 4, our horizontal asymptote. We say that as the limit approaches positive infinity, as the notation suggests, then the value of the function, so f of x, approaches 4. Now, this does make sense because if you look at the value, the x values, as x value gets greater and greater, the line gets closer and closer to um, the horizontal asymptote. So that means as x um, approaches positive infinity, this function approaches a constant value y equals 4. All right, in this question, we want to find what's the limit of function 3x squared as x approaches 2. To find the limit, we can simply substitute x equals 2 into this function to find the corresponding value. Um, so we know that um, the limit as x approaches 2 of this function, this is equal to 3 times x is now 2 squared and that's simply 3 times 4 which is 12. So we say that as x gets closer and closer to 2, the value of 3x squared gets closer and closer to 12. Now in this case we know that we cannot directly substitute x equals 2 into this function because that's going to make the denominator equal 0 and we know that's not going to work because in a fraction the denominator can never be 0. So we need to factorize and simplify before we can substitute the value. Okay, let's factorize uh, the numerator first. To factorize this quadratic, we first multiply the coefficient of x squared term by the constant term c. Um, in this case, the coefficient of x squared term is 2 and the constant term is also 2 and 2 times 2 equals 4. So that means we need to find two numbers which have a product of 4 and a sum of negative 5. The reason why we want to find um, two numbers that have sum of negative 5 is because we have negative 5 in this term here. Um, there are negative 4 and negative 1, right? Because negative 4 times negative 1 equals 4 and negative 4 plus negative 1 equals negative 5. So that's going to help us with factorization. So now if we rewrite negative 5x as negative 4x minus 1x, let's try that. So 2x squared minus 4x minus 1x and plus 2. We can factorize the first two terms and the last two terms separately. Um, so if you take out 2x here, we are left with x minus 2 in the brackets minus uh, bracket x minus 2. So the expressions in the brackets should be the same. Um, the first bracket is the common factor. So if we rewrite this, we have x minus 2, that's the common factor, and the second bracket is the factorized terms outside each bracket, uh, which is 2x minus 1, okay? Now our function f of x becomes x minus 2 times 2x minus 1 on top over x minus 2, and we can simplify. So we have x minus 2, x minus 2, that's gone, and we are left with 2x minus 1 only. And now the limit of this function, 2x minus 1, as x approaches 2 is simply um, 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, and the value is 3. So we can say that the graph of um, f, okay, you can take any real number except 2, 
and this function is 2x minus 1. And here are some useful and important rules that we can follow when evaluating the limits. So suppose that f of x and g of x are functions that a is a real number um, and assume that both functions exist. So to find the sum of these two functions, you basically add them up. So that is the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. When multiplying a number to a function, you can simply take that number out. So take it to the front and just find the limit of the function first and then multiply them together. So in this case, k is a given real number. The product when two numbers, so when two functions are multiplied together, the limit of the product is the product of the limits. For quotient, for division, um, the limit of the quotient is the quotient of the limits. So it's quite simple. You find the limits respectively and you find the quotient. And here it's important to keep in mind that the denominator can never be zero. That's why the limit of g of x as x approaches a cannot equal to zero. So this is something to be aware of. So in the first question, we want to find the limit of function three h plus four um, as h approaches zero. So we can just find them respectively, the limit of three h as h approaches zero and the limit of um, constant four as h approaches zero. So as h approaches zero, three times zero becomes zero. And when h approaches zero, we don't have any h in the second function. So it stays four, therefore the answer is four. So the limit of three h plus four as h approaches zero is four. Okay, second question is uh, multiplication. Let's find them respectively. So um, we have four x, the limit of 4x as x approaches 2 times um, the limit of x plus 2 as x approaches 2. 4 times 2 equals 8 times um, 2, ti 2 plus 2 equals 4. And the answer is 32. Question C, this is division. Okay. Again, let's find the limits of each expression first. Of the top one, the limit of 5x plus 2 as x approaches 3, divided by the limit of x minus 2 as x approaches 3. So 3 times 5 equals 15, 15 plus 2 equals um, 17, and um, divided by 3 minus 2 equals 1. So the answer is simply 17. So we say that the limit of this function as x approaches 3 is 17. Okay, three more questions to go. Now, these three questions are actually uh, trickier than the ones before because there's uh, we need to factorize it first and then simplify it before we can um, find the limit. So let's try the first one. It's a quotient. Okay, so limit as x approaches 3 on top of the fraction, we can take x out because that's a common factor. Then in the brackets, we're left with x minus 3 and all over x minus 3. It's good because we have a common factor. We can divide both the top and the bottom by x minus 3 and we are left with x only. So now we're saying that what's the value of x? as x approaches 3, and the answer is simply 3. Okay, so as you can see, uh, question A, there's a bit of factorization involved, but overall, it's still a quite um, easy question. Um, so factorize x out and simplify before you apply the limit. So second question, let's again, let's try to simplify using the method we used before. We want to find two numbers which have a product of negative 2 and a sum of negative 1. So these numbers are quite clearly, and these numbers can be um, negative 2 and 1 because negative 2 times 1 equals negative 2, and negative 2 plus 1 equals negative 1. So we can rewrite x squared minus 
2x plus 1x minus 2. And then if we factorize it, um, we take our x and in the brackets we left with x minus 2 and plus um, x minus 2. So that's good. We have a common factor x minus 2 and in the second brackets we just write and in the second brackets we just write the factorized term outside each bracket which is x plus 1. Okay now let's find the limit. Um, now we have x minus 2 times x plus 1 on top all over x minus 2. We simplify so we um, divide both by x minus 2 so that's gone and we have limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 2 and that's equal to 2 plus 1 which is 3 again. Okay last question let's factorize the top first x squared minus 7x plus 10. We want to find um, two numbers which have a product of positive 10 and a sum of negative 7. It's quite clear that these two numbers are negative 2 and negative 5 because negative 2 times negative 5 equals positive 10 and negative 2 minus 5 equals um, negative 7. Okay, so let's rewrite this. x squared uh, minus 2x minus 5x plus 10. Factorize, take out x left with x minus 2 in the brackets, minus, so take take out 5 as a common factor, in the brackets we're left with x minus 2. So that's good. Again, we write x minus 2 this common factor first in the brackets, and the second part simply becomes x minus 5. Now, notice that the denominator is the difference of two squares. So x squared minus 25 can be uh, rewritten as x plus 5, times x minus 5. Now let's try to simplify this function. Um, the limit as x approaches 3, on top we have x minus 2 times x minus 5. At the bottom we have x plus 5 times x minus 5. Obviously we have x minus 5, that's a common factor, and we are left with x minus 2 on top and x plus 5 at the bottom. And if we sub in the value now, we find the answer to be 1 8. So we say that as x approaches 3, this function approaches 1 8. As you can see, some questions are fairly simple where you can directly sub in the value and find the limits. Whereas some questions involve multiple steps, including factorizing first and then simplifying before you can find the limit. Hope you find this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!